Welcome back to the Colvet experience. In this posting, I'm walking through my experience restoring the cluster. I didn't take any footage of breaking down the cluster as well as stripping the black paint off, and so I'll have to explain. Also didn't take video of uh, taking it out of the dash. Once you have gotten the cluster dash install screws out and positioned where you can reach the wiring harness connections, you will need to disconnect the gauges, ground, ignition switch, lighter switch, light switch, actuator switch, and the copper oil line connection. Be warned this is not a job to take lightly and use a small screwdriver to assist with pulling off the connections. The space is limited and even the smallest hands will find it hard to get a strong grip on the connections. You'll also need a wrench to disconnect the copper oil line. Be sure to use a towel when doing this to catch the oil drips. It's definitely a thing. There's a lot of pressure. Eventually, and with a careful hand, you'll have the cluster disconnected and out of the dash. Then it's a matter of taking out and off the screws and nuts that affix the back tray to the cluster faceplate. From there, you can take out the gauges by bending the fixation tabs outward or allow for the gauge the carrier to be removed. To be prepared for restoring the cluster faceplate, I need to strip off the old black paint. All that is needed is paint stripper and time. It comes off easy. The recorded video now picks up with me starting to restore the cluster. Instead of montaging this, I am letting the videos play out as I recorded them. So as you join me now, I'm at a place to where I can define and talk about a few things. Because before this, I really couldn't speak, uh, speak to it. Interesting enough, let's see if that light helps, it does. Um, I've been able to, uh, there's a how-to online that I'm using. I'll put the link below uh, the video for everyone to share. This is just me replicating that. I've invented nothing here. However, I am using some ingenuity that I could find in my own garage and not going out and buying uh, particular things, rather using what I have. So MacGyver always comes to mind uh, at this point. Um, what you see here is the cluster um, without the gauges in it. And I went out and uh, sourced the right materials to put it back together. The first thing I did is I had to tape off the top of these dials, or rings if you will, where the dials go, the gauges go, because they're supposed to be chrome. And when you strip all this, uh, which is the first step to strip the paint stripper, the paint down to bare metal, and then paint it back up by layers, uh, you'll find that the whole thing is chrome to begin with. Uh, but in the 63, uh, it's unique because it had frosted uh, rings around the gauges with the accent being chrome and uh, you want to reproduce that. So I went out and sourced the correct frosting paint, uh, which happens to be this very 70s, 80s looking can of Seymour high-tech engine coating metallic dull aluminum aluminum matte. This is perfect. It matches what that frosted look should be. Uh, I painted that first, but to do that, as you can tell, I've taped off quite a bit. I did so with tape and a razor blade, and I took a few hours one night to just get it right. Um, the how-to is going to stay use a one-eighth strip of tape to get around it. I couldn't do that. I don't have it. I couldn't find it at my local hardware store either. I didn't go to the automotive store. Uh, we're within COVID, so I'm kind of keeping my store visits to a minimum, uh, mainly one place so I can figure out the source if I do get sick. Uh, but that said, uh, we got it to a point where I taped off everywhere there should be a chrome accent, and now I've got it to where I painted it back up to the silver. Now, the how-to says you've got to uh, cover the frosted areas because you don't want to paint over them black. The next layer to go on is black. And so I'm using this. This is Curdy. This actually is a, a waterproofing system that you put into your shower. I happen to have a few extra pieces. What I like about it, it's already pre-bent, so it wants to curve. And second, uh, this tape adheres to this uh, kind of uh, material felt feeling, and it really is easy to get around and form it into place. So as you can tell, I've got three into place. I've got one, two, three more to go. Uh, actually, uh, I've got more. I've got one, two, one, two, three, four, five. 
more to go. And so what I've done is it's going to be a bunch of cylinders looking. Uh, it's going to look like a little city when you look at it from a certain area. Uh, but a bunch of little cylinders hanging up, uh, pointing up, and I'm going to have to paint in between them. Uh, this is really cool. I'm enjoying this part of it. I want to get it right, and so here I am. So again, I'm not out there getting perfect materials for it. I'm using just stuff I can find around the house to get it done, and it looks like it's coming out pretty nicely. And I'm very excited at this point because it's turning out to be a fantastic project. Uh, in this project, it's phase gate. Uh, the first, uh, and, in the, and below in the video, there'll be a detail on how to phase gate this project. I uh, wish I could agile it somehow, but I can't. It really has to be a step-by-step uh, -step procedure uh, as it is automotive. Usually when it comes to homes and automotive, it's more of a uh, waterfall type approach or a serialized approach, unfortunately. Um, there are some things you can try to do in parallel, but certain things have to go back first or in place first before others can be layered on top of it. So in any case, the majority of this is definitely a waterfall project. This is for all you PMPs out there, uh, not you ACPs. I have the Agile Certified Practitioner as well as the Certified Scrum Master. Uh, I believe in Agile. If I could Agilize this, my life would be done quicker and over and the car would be on the road. Rather, this is Waterfall, which is taking its time. Okay, so I'd like to give a few points on how I'm getting the diameter uh, for these circles. And it's not that easy, it turns out, uh, but I am finding a good way to do it. Uh, basically, I'm taking an extra piece of material. I am winding it around it, finding out where it touches just about, and I'm measuring or just marking it just beyond that point, and I'm using that as the measurement to then cut the next piece. Uh, not terribly scientific, uh, however it is uh, perhaps empirical. Okay, so I've got it to a point where I've gotten all the forms created for the dials to be protected. And again, I'm using Curdy. This is a waterproofing uh, material that you use in your bathrooms. And it wasn't really selected for this because of its waterproofing properties or its ability to um, make shapes properties. Rather, um, it comes in a roll and it has this uh, ability to keep its form. And I thought that that was something I could use here more than just paper or construction paper or something like that. And so I think it's a fine choice. Now, one thing I learned watching some videos on how to restore rims you know, steel rims with black paint or any paint, is that he coated the tire, the person coated the tire with um, Armor All or, you know, that wet tire spray that you'll find at the automotive parts store. And I found that to be interesting to maybe use the same concept here. What I don't want to have is when I have these on, they're not going to always sit perfectly, but they'll, or perfect, but they'll perfectly be on there. But there's an opportunity for the paint to then get on the bezel, which I don't want that. So I'm taking the opportunity to paint on some uh, petroleum jelly around the base of all the dials because I believe when I paint it, I'll be able to then wipe any paint off that's stuck on the petroleum jelly versus on the paint of the bezel. So just a little tip and trick on how to save the bottom of this. I'm only painting the bottom areas and then putting the felt or the Curdy paper right back on top. Uh, shout out to Curdy, thank you for making this. I think you have an automotive opportunity if you already haven't found it. Um, that said, I'm gonna continue on painting. No sense of you watching me continue. I'm just painting the bottom of these dials, as you can tell. And then I'm gonna to go to paint. Okay, I went ahead and applied the petroleum jelly to all the bezels, uh, the bases of them. And now I'm going to fit the collars back around the bezels and uh, check to see if they are as flush as can be. Uh, the idea for the petroleum jelly again is that if there's some overspray or some gap between here and the bezel and the base that I can wipe it off. I, see, I saw this on a video for how to refinish rims and um, without taking the tire off basically and I'll find that link and I'll put it at the bottom of this video in this post. Uh, you don't have to sit here and watch uh, everything happen. I'll turn it back on when I've got everything set up.
Okay, here we are with all the cones around the bezels. Uh, there's a lot of risk here because in this part of the project, I want to paint this area black. I don't want any paint inside of there. So now I need to find a way to plug all of these. And it might just be laying a piece over and then spray underneath it. Uh, I need to be able to get access. I'm gonna go with a few light coats versus big coats, which is going to be better. I know that to be true. And if you'll notice, in places like here, I've got these blue, probably from the video it looks to be tabs, or circles, but what they really are, is this is where the mounting screws go, and I couldn't find a way to plug those holes because the original one has it uh, chromed or painted, and they're not black. So I'm being a bit persnickety here. I don't really have the NCRS rules on restoring the gauge, but I believe the gauge I took out was a 63 gauge that had not ever been restored. And so I remember some of the design language that I saw there, in which case these holes were um, silver. And then there's this small little, uh, there is a small thin um, accent ring around them that was silver as well. I'm trying to preserve that. Now to do it, you're asking, well, what is this? I couldn't find anything. I couldn't think of a thing. I'm thinking of maybe we use little, um, uh, sticker circles from my son who's six years old or something like that and then I realized Play-Doh. Play-Doh is great because then I can plug the hole and it's easy to manipulate and cut around uh, and plug all these holes just about perfectly. So I spent some time, which you're not going to see on a video, but just imagine that I'm plugging it and cutting around it, trying to get these fashioned and then you realize that Play-Doh is going to dry up and shrink. And so I'm looking at it and I can see the exposed ring that I've been trying to protect uh, with the Play-Doh. Although the cone is protected, the ring is now visible. So I'm gonna spend some time trying to correct that if I can. If not, we're just going to paint and that's going to be painted over. Uh, perhaps I can scrape it off later. I'm not sure how to do that. But for this point, uh, a couple more things before I can get to paint, covering these holes and then working on this and then we're going to paint. Also worthy of mentioning is that after I applied the petroleum jelly to the bases of the bezel, and then I put the curdy paper back on top of it, there's a um, unintended benefit of the curdy paper sticking to the petroleum jelly, which are making these stay in place a lot better and actually holding them closer to the table uh, bezel connection versus how it was kind of hovering above based on pressure. Good stuff. Okay, at this point, I've actually added more tape to the inside of each one of the cones as to not have the spray go in through the seams uh, for a little bit more quality control. Uh, more so quality assurance as well. So in the method of, I'm trying to ensure that the paint just goes around it, not in it, or on top of it. And so I'm thinking of how do I protect the top? Uh, was it just stuff it with some paper towels or something? Um, make little hats for each one of them, which I still might do. Or does a big piece of cardboard laying over top of everything make sense as well? I don't know the answer yet uh, with the cardboard here. I'm not quite sure how I'm going to get I do have access for the spray, which is good news, uh, but it may not be good enough. I don't know. I'm hoping that this turns out really well. I'm taking a lot of precautions to do so. This is very tedious. And to be quite honest, the direction said that this would be tedious, uh, but I've come this far and I want it to look good. Next steps, uh, continue on with uh, fashioning something on top of here so I can get to painting. Okay, I think I'm gonna go with the top hat approach with one big piece. Uh, another unintended benefit is that the weight on it is pushing these uh, cones down uh, closer to the table of the bezel, uh, table of the table and bezel connection closer down to it. So I'm gonna continue on that direction. I believe I need just to get a better piece of board. Okay, I have moved from bench top to floor. Here's what the paint scenario looks like. Not sure what to call this.
pink box. I don't know. Uh, but I'm gonna move on with applying some black paint and see how this first layer goes.
Okay, you just witnessed the first coat. With the top on, I can't really get a lot of these seams. That's an issue. Second, if I stuff the middle of these, it distorts the shape because it's not a rigid shape. Rather, it is a, you know, paper material. So it's gonna deform based on its resistance factor versus others, right? So now I need to get in between these areas and I need to figure out what to do. The paint is applied so far pretty well, pretty happy with what this first coat looks like, uh, but I'm not so happy about the fact that I need to figure out how to get in the middle. So here is almost the finished product. The Curtis held up really well. What I can't seem to get is some of the seams to the side and in between areas, mostly where it says lights and wipers. It's okay. I believe I'm gonna use a brush for that. For the most part, I'm pretty happy about what it looks like. Uh, and I could take the Curdy on and off just easily. So for now, I'm going to take it off and let everything dry and show you what that looks like. Here it is. Not too bad. <clears throat> what I'd like to point out is the areas where the paint did not quite go. I guess what I'm gonna do here is put the cones back on the bezel and then use a paintbrush uh, to finish those parts. Otherwise, I don't wanna to touch it. I believe I've got lucky. And uh, I don't know. I'm gonna sleep on it and then uh, finish it up tomorrow. But as for now, I've got perfectly frosted bezels. And uh, I'm happy. Here we are, now I'm revealing it. I finally finished the black painting of it. It wasn't easy. There was a lot of technique to try to get into the sides and covering, and uh, it was just not easy at all. Um, the tubes, the Curdy worked perfectly. Uh, you'll see that when it comes off, the bezels really did retain very well. I think uh, one bezel I ever sprayed on, I'm fine with that. You know what, it's as perfectly done as I possibly could. Um, now I have taken off the cones, and I took off the masking tape that I put here, the painter's tape, and it's revealing a perfectly chromed rim as specified by the 1963 cluster uh, for the C2 Corvette. I am ecstatic. I'm gonna continue to reveal and uh, watch along. Cluster is coming back to life.
this is a bit of a Christmas morning feeling. Think about what it took to tape this off. I just want to point out you have to be diligent and dedicated to getting this right. Even with all my effort and technique and uh, risk for project management, uh, it's still not perfect. There's still parts that I possibly couldn't have done better, I don't think, uh, with the taping. Just a guy at home. 63 and me, basically. Um, but you know what? It's going to show just fine. When I drive it every day, I look at it. I know that I, I had a hand in getting it to a better state in 2020. This was a fun project. Uh, in the bottom of the postings, I will put the work breakdown structure as well as my thoughts on project management for this particular project. Now this is just a child project that rolls into the ultimate parent of restoring the complete 63. And this will go down in the books as one of my favorite 